A new week. College basketball has definitely uh, lived up to all expectations thus far across the country. Um, I think there are several uh, feel-good stories that any of you could find and write about, um, you know, specifically dealing with uh, our program. I think it starts with our fans. Um, it starts with their consistency. It starts with their uh, drive, but also they're giving us their very best, and the atmosphere speaks for it. The atmosphere shows it. Um, the atmosphere sounds like it. Uh, and I, I credit I credit them. I credit their, their unwavering um, approach, uh, but also the stick-to-itness. Uh, it's not perfect. Uh, a product in terms of who we are, but ultimately they have gotten us to this point thus far, and I appreciate that. I know that generally you guys try to kind of block out any outside noise, don't pay attention to good or bad from, from the outside, but you've gone from probably the beginning of the year where you, you know maybe not a ton was expected to now entering a part of the season where a lot of people outside are, are going to look and say, hey, they, they should be able to do this and that. Does your approach with the guys change at all based on based on what they might hear? This is a couple things you have to kind of dissect in that statement or your question. <laughs> My expectation has not changed, and it's been more than what the external expectation has always been. The internal drive, the internal uh, push that I've put on the shoulders of our players, our staff, and anyone that touches our program, uh, we, we first start talking about April 1st, April 3rd, right after uh, the press conference, right, of me being the Witten family head men's basketball coach. Um, and I spoke to my staff about it every opportunity that we've had. So my dreams, aspirations will not change, and they will not change. I'm not going up or down. I'm staying the same because it, it has been spoken uh, in those words and those true words to our players and we've we've been working no different than that the only ranking that matters is the one uh, after one shiny moment is played on national television and it comes out April 4th right those that's the only ranking that we focus on uh, but also that's where uh, we have to understand in short term we have to be prepared to do certain things and long term we have to train no different than that and make decisions for those, those moments and that's what our guys have continue, continuously done. Dennis, can you learn from the from the net rankings? Does it at least tell you where you where you are? And The net rankings? Yeah. Uh, analytically, I think everyone across the country is trying to still figure out um, the net ranking, right? I think you're getting more educated each and every week, but also each and every year uh, that it has been presented. Uh, as it relates to, uh, to, the, to the staff, we don't talk much about it. We focus on what we can control, and that's performances in games, and they, they take hold of all analytical numbers. It's not just wins or losses. It's uh, sometimes shooting, sometimes turnover percentage, sometimes margin of, of a win uh, is more important or even margin of losses. I think we have to continue to dial in to our players and not approach it where that is part of what their thinking is. They have to play the game. Um, but more importantly, we have to do our part, uh, no different than we've done it with scheduling, meeting with our administration, Desiree Reed, Francois, Greg Hewlin. They have been essential in, in us planning um, this past season, but also essential in everything that touches our program from fan engagement to marketing, but also to game day experience, which I think um, our fans enjoy. Coach, they announced this morning that the Ole Miss game sold out along with Texas A&M. How does, how does that make you feel? Well, what, what it does is this. It solidifies what I've always thought and is outstanding. Um, last game we announced a sellout during a sellout and you have to understand the magnitude of that to say that we've had every Saturday game uh, sold out in our SEC season no one would have thought that such would be done or accomplished but when you dream big and you go out and give your very best anything's possible it, what it says is that we have people behind the scenes in every department not just men's basketball but uh, collectively in our department in our ticket sales in our administration in our TSF in our you know we got uh, it, it takes a village it's not just 
uh, because Dennis Gakes is here. We have all unbelievable employees. We have a great department that will continue to grow, uh, but also we have great coaches, and it's just not with myself. It's not just with uh, football, with Eli. It's not just with Robin, women's basketball. It's, it's throughout our department, and um, they do a good job, and they've done a great job extending uh, a branch and allowing uh, me to grow but also teaching me and, and, and inviting me and o with open arms uh, into this family. So I appreciate all our coaches, all our staff members who've done that. Um, it's just a special place, man. And the results, that's the data, right? That is the analytics that uh, matters when it comes down to um, internal changes or even external uh, changes. It's, it's fans coming back who hadn't been back in a while uh, post COVID, it interrupted a lot, but um, it, it feels good to see uh, people support our programs. Yeah, as headed into February, just how much more competitive are you expecting things to get as a lot of these teams are looking at these games as must wins? Well, I think we're in a part of the season. These, these are the dog days before the uh, madness. And, you know, the madness happens in March, but there's several, several things that happen in February that prepares a team um, that, you know, uh, put teams in position uh, to have uh, success. I think it's important for us to stay in the short term and make sure we just uh, focus on our next opponent. The most important opponent is ourselves. I've said that all along, and um, it's the person we see when we look in the mirror uh, from man to man in our program, and we talk about that often. Um, the next most important opponent is obviously uh, who we play against, and we can never look too far ahead nor too far behind. Um, and allow those things to get in our way or out of our vision. And we have to remain focused and not distracted. And uh, February is a, a great month of college basketball, not just uh, with Mizzou, but throughout our conference. You'll see teams get better. You'll see teams uh, stay the same. You'll see teams um, have some great wins. Um, you know, I think possessions come down to four or five points and sometimes one possession in this month, and it has done so repeatedly. And Coach, what impact has um, Coach Ryan Sharball had on defense this season? Oh, Coach Sharball is my defensive coordinator. Um, that's his responsibility. There is no doubt about it. Uh, Matt Klein is our offensive coordinator. Uh, but Ryan Sharball, and I know um, it sounds sort of cliche, but um, I've learned a lot with my experience as an assistant and just picking the brains of those football coaches um, and how they break down responsibilities and things like that. And it's something that I learned from Leonard Hamilton. We've had offensive coordinators and defensive coordinators in our system at Florida State. So uh, to have uh, Coach Sharball, who is a defensive-minded coach, he's worked for some great coaches, Jim Boone, uh, Leonard Hamilton. Also, he worked at uh, Bradley with Brian Wardle. Um, and obviously at Cleveland State with me, and to have him here uh, with us, he gives us what we need. He, he's a great teacher. Uh, he's a future head coach in his own right. Um, you know, you can see the results, uh, but also you can see the intensity at which our guys play, and it's impactful what he does and his approach. Um, so I'm excited about Coach Charbaugh. I'm excited about our entire staff. We do a great job of working with each other, but also healthy, in a healthy way, challenging uh, each other's thoughts so that we can look from the, from the lens of an opponent uh, trying to dissect us. So there's things we still need to clean up, there's no doubt, but I think our guys are giving their very best in the effort, and they're doing exactly what we're asking them to do. Ms. Ellis Hughes arriving with you on the back of eight straight losses. How, how do you approach this? this type of matchup when a team's going through kind of an, an unexpected slump like this? Yeah, I think the question was asked earlier, what does February? February, everybody's zero and zero. Uh, as you move into March, you have to approach it that way. You cannot uh, look at it any other way. Um, you know, we have to look at it how we look at it. And they're not a replicate of their of their record. They're, they're not that team. Uh, coach McMahon is a great coach. I've had great respect for him. I've known him for some time. Um, you know, it's just one of those things where you got to look beyond that. Uh, they have some great players. They have a top 50 player in the country. Um, there's no doubt, you know, they're coming in 
and they're not looking at their record. They're trying to win a ball game, and we have to focus on the things that gives us an opportunity to win a ball game as well. Dennis, when you put this roster together, I, of all the new guys, Nick was the only one that had played at the quote unquote high major level. I'm sure it's different with every guy, but are there are there certain qualities that that you go out looking for, saying I, this is going to allow a kid to to translate what he's doing at that level to to this one? You know, I can't give all the secrets out, man. You know that. <laughs> just maybe a couple. You know that. I can just talk about the guys that play for me. Um, you know, specifically Ben Sternberg. I thought. Ben's infectious personality allows him to change a room, change the climate of a team. There's a lot of great days in a season, but there's a lot of days that's not great, uh, not so great uh, during that season as well. So who has that impact? Who has the leadership qualities? Uh, I think you guys can log on to his YouTube channel and figure out how he has impacted uh, our locker room in a great way, and he connects everyone. Uh, Mabor Mejak, the same exact way. These guys have come into a program, but also into relationships and friendships where um, they could, you know, sort of transcribe or even interpret my language to their teammates, and I think that's helpful, especially when they know the environment that I'm trying to build. Um, you know, Trey Gomillion the same way. Coach Gomillion is a great, a great uh, representation of the type of student athlete uh, we want to continue to bring in our program. Someone that uh, sees the game with his view, but also someone that loves it uh, the same way. I think his passion speaks for itself. His passion rubs off on our fan base. Uh, if you're watching a game, he jumps out of the screen. But if you're in here live, you can really feel his effort, and sometimes that can give you chills. Right? You see him active although he hadn't played you see him active in our huddles you see him uh, making suggestions you see him how he's able to really really move a team in his own right Demoy Hodge I said all along we need a guy that can be all defensive team and that's one of those guys who can be SEC all defensive team or SEC defensive player of the year I think he does a great job uh, in his own right, uh, just being as active as he is, a great defender, a guy that plays with energy, but a guy that can also make shots uh, with the best of them. Um, you know, those things matter. I think you have to understand the lens of a team's personality, but also the lens of a, a individual. We just have a lot of guys that's able to sacrifice their individual goals, and um, there's no progress without that sacrifice. And I thank our team um, tremendously, and I, I can't continue to say the words that I need to say to them. Uh, that's why I try to show them as much love as possible for adhering to our core values, friendship, love, accountability, trust, discipline, unselfishness, enthusiasm, and toughness the way that they have. One last question. Coach, when you look back at the Iowa State game, I know you said you didn't feel like the team played very well. What are some of the things that uh, you think the team could do a better job of, especially moving into the second half of conference play? Well, the things that I thought stood out uh, in that last game was um, – you know, we, we, we pulled up a little bit, and, and I don't think that when I subbed guys in uh, or out that we were gap-free. We, we ended up having some gaps in our intensity um, that I saw. Um, in terms of watching a game from the sideline, you, you are and you have a responsibility before you sub in to see what the flow is, and now if that part or that ingredient is taken out, you should be able to morph into, because we have a play, players full of versatility, you should be able to morph into that piece of the puzzle that keeps us going. And I don't think we did that um, well. Uh, I don't think Mo played as well as he could have uh, on both ends. Um, I thought he was impacted by his missed dunk. Uh, and I don't, I don't want my guys to be deflated by plays like that. That's, those are gaps that gives opponents opportunity to dive into or, or find a weakness. And I, I don't want that to be a part of our identity. Uh, last but not least, I didn't think we got to the free throw line enough. Uh, that's going to be important in February uh, moving forward. you got to get to the free throw line. All right, thanks, Coach. Let me get this one question, okay. if you don't mind. Sorry. No, you are. Um, any update on uh, Trey and, and Kobe? I know Kobe the game, but he's still kind of hurting a little bit against the state. Yeah, I mean, Kobe has practiced last two days. He's done his treatment, so I, you know, I don't unless something comes up.
you know, after that, there's nothing. Trago Million is game to game. I, I can't, um, and we'll 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 have to figure that out. But uh, he's game to game, game to decisions, um, and I have to just be patient with him. I'm going to err on the side of caution, as I've demonstrated before uh, with any guy. Uh, but we just got to make sure that he's healthy and look at it from a big picture. All right, Mazi.